Hey guys, welcome to another episode in Tech and Talk. This is Uzman. It's been a long time. Couldn't get enough time to have another episode, another video. So today we are gonna talk about the uh, securing or object reference referencing uh, in ASP.NET Core. <clears throat> what that mean is, uh, let's say you need to access an object by id uh, on web api so and your api is restful so your url would be like uh, um, www.abc.com slash api slash user slash one and one is the id of the user and you don't want to and actually you don't want to expose that id uh, in your uh, web request so what we can do is we should uh, we can use uh, something else that will be referencing internally to that id so that our id is not exposed <clears throat> So to securing that uh, ID or the object reference in ASP.NET Core, ASP.NET provide a feature for that. That feature is a data protection provider, uh, which is uh, available in ASP.NET Core. So let's see how that works. This is a small implementation but very important from security point of view and we are going to use the same tech and talk solution uh, you can find that uh, this is up on grid you can find that it's a, a git reference in the, in the description uh, uh, in below so uh, we are going to use asp.net core project for this <coughs> sorry and uh, this is default template um, and the default value control so what what I was saying that uh, the objects that will be returned their IDs will not be the actual IDs we will wrap them using the sp.net uh, nets provided uh, data protection and uh, and when we call an object we will not give uh, or we will not provide its id directly we will use that wrapped string or that uh, encrypted string and internally we will uh, convert that string into the same id and will return that object so let's see how we can do this <clears throat> so this is the default uh, setup uh, .cs file and what we will need is we will need uh, so need to include the um, add data protection that's it this is how we will <clears throat> well actually we are saying here that add data protection module in our services so that we can inject that uh, feature inside our controller uh, as a dependency injection <coughs> So yeah, let's uh, add private read only I data protection data protection. Hmm. 
this will be going to use sorry that was the data protector data pro data protector <clears throat> that's it let's create a constructor so that we can inject our and uh, that uh, protection provider provider <clears throat> and data protector is equal to provider dot create protector and we need to give a name <coughs> sorry <coughs> Uh, name any name uh, to distinguish your protectors inside your controller let's say my id protector it has nothing to do with the implementation or logic this is just for the developers so that they can distinguish between the different protectors we are using in our code <clears throat> So next thing would be the model we need to uh, use for our controllers. So let's create a model inside our project. Mm, let's models and inside it add a new item which will be our class. Let's say it's user model. We will not going to use the uh, actual repositories here or services here. We will just mock or we just mimic uh, a method which will provide the list of users to us. <clears throat> Let's say it's ID and just add another property with string and name that's enough for our understanding so let's go back and let's add another private list of user model get user users like this and <clears throat> let's resolve this one users is equal to new list of <coughs> sorry user model and let's add users dot add and inside it let's just <clears throat> initialize values search one and name is in talk user yeah <clears throat> yeah one user will be enough and just need to return the users so this is the our substitute or mock repository or our data provider <clears throat> let's just remove the extra method so we will need only two uh, actions and these two actions will be enough for our understanding how uh, the data protector provider uh, does work okay let's just <coughs> i update the return type to i action results var users is equal to get users like that and next thing would be
yeah war out put is equal to user start select <laughs> that is from link And here we will use our data protector dot pro protect and <clears throat> inside the protect method we will give the actual user ID <clears throat> actually it accepts only the <clears throat> so we don't need that <clears throat> we just rename it and that's it side return okay <clears throat> just put our output and that's it and if we just access our <clears throat> value action now the get value action you can see instead of the actual ID we have a encrypted or hash or just um, random string here so that's it we have a random ID here and the actual name so our ID is protected now so this is that was only for the cat request let's see how we can do that for the get uh, by ID like if we give here one and enter we are just returning the value so we need to protect that id or reference of an object basically the id is the primary key in our database so we don't want to expose these ids uh, in uh, very sensitive systems like financing or medical so to protect that let's uh, let's update that get by id method <clears throat> first of all need to change this to string need to change this to i action result and <coughs> same way let's call over repo and Need is need to convert or unprotect that ID again into the original ID and just store the original ID into a variable called original ID equals to um, it will convert it back to string so we need to parse it <clears throat> to int again like this so we will have the original id here so from the list of users let's select the user from that like this and just return that object 
into the spoons yeah that's it just run it yeah first time get time and that will be the values and in our url just follow the pattern just call paste the id and uh, the pattern is uh, for getting a single object is api slash values slash the string basically the id and just click the enter so this is how we are given back the original data uh, from that hashed or encrypted id so this is how we can protect our urls and information inside our url and also you can reprotect this id inside that gets in the same way as we did for uh, get all uh, action so that was it i hope you guys understand how we can use the data protector and now in the sp.net code and the main reason of this is to protect our sensitive data to so that user can't can't see the actual values of uh, the objects we don't want to expose uh, yeah that's it and that was it for today uh, we'll try to be compose another tutorial or another uh, video as soon as possible till now bye bye and uh, just one thing that uh, i will push that code to github repo you could find the link inside the description uh, enjoy the coding